Hi, I'm Zane Lamprey. We're just finishing up our tour of Belgium, and in this episode, I drank chocolate beer. I had a beer that was 22 proof, and I drank a shot of something that was made up of Brussels sprouts. It was, it was really gross, and I threw up a lot. Every night, in every city around the world, it happens. People pour into local watering holes to, well, drink. It's my mission, that's me, to traverse the globe, getting to know these different people and their drinking customs. Bellying up to the bar, and with any luck, making some new friends. Warning, no matter where you go in the world, always beware of the beer hunter. Yeah, these fruit beers. The guy behind me keeps drinking my beers. I didn't tell him he could drink my beers, but he's drinking my beers. He just picks them up and goes, oh, that's good. You'll see more of this guy later. He's crazy. But first, let's talk about Belgium. Famous for waffles, chocolates, and my favorite, beer. In fact, Belgium is home to over a thousand varieties of beer, most costing about the same as a typical American microbrew. But there are some specialty beers that are even more expensive, like the ones made by monks, the vintage ones bottled like champagne, and the super strong ones that are about as boozy as some wines. I plan on tasting as much of this beer as one man can do in one day, and I'm gonna begin my Belgian beer fest in Brussels, the capital of Belgium and of the European Union which makes this city a major hub of activity for people from all over the world. In fact, the population and the buildings here are so dense that at night, the city emanates a glow that can be seen from outer space. Something else that's out of this world is the food. And as we all know, you should never drink on an empty stomach. Since I'm drinking Belgian beer in Belgium, I might as well fill up on the national dish of Belgium, mussels and fries. Gesundheit. Cheers. This is Terry. He works here at Chez Lyon, located in the heart of Brussels. Here they serve up more mussels and fries than any other place in town. You may know that every day we cook at least 500 kilos of mussels a day. And with every batch of mussels comes a big pile of fries. By the way, French fries, as we call them, were actually invented in Belgium, not France. Hey, voila, Belgium beer, beer Lyon, all the best. In addition to serving the national dish, Chez Lyon brews the national beverage, beer. Wait, wait, wait. Is he scraping the top of my beer with his knife? This calls for a three sheets instant replay. In Belgium, they believe that scraping the foam off the top helps the beer release its bouquet, making for a more pleasant drinking experience. And the bouquet of this beer can't be beat. It's flavored with orange peel, giving it a slightly fruity and refreshing edge. After sampling the beer and watching the Chez Lyon chef in action, it's meal time, starting with a toast. Cheers. Cheers. Or we say, um, santé, présente, it's all cheese. Yeah, both. I didn't get any of that. Say that again. Gesundheit. Bless you. Oh, oh Gesundheit. We say that when you sneeze. Yeah? Yeah, so when sneezes, you say Gesundheit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You want to say that? Uh, when you have um, a glass of uh, wine or beer, we say that. Watch. It's a different Watch. atmosphere. Yeah, Gesundheit. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Next, Terry shows me how to eat mussels when in Brussels. So if you are Belgian, you, you don't need a fork and a spoon. Why you would you want a fork? Would you gonna, uh, yeah, look at how she's going to yeah. eat it. Hey! <laughs> I got, I got special room for my muscles. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Jumbo. I know. Are you watching, Kelly? Oh, man. Sorry. That's fun. I'm done. After pre-funking like a true Belgian, it's off to a local bar called Mort Sabit, which means sudden death. The beer they serve is also called Sudden Death. I'm not afraid. Ooh, did you hear something? Hello, good afternoon. How are you? Your table is ready. Sir. Thank you. After you. I'm putting myself in the hands of Bart the bartender. Armed with a pack of smokes, a fidgety dog, and his love for beer, 
This guy not only serves his customers, he drinks with them too. I would think the same as you. And he's about to introduce me to a drinking game that could be the death of me. The game is under the kept, so the game keeps warm, you understand? The game is, we call it 421. Okay. But the game became popular because of the bar. And the game is you have three dice. Okay. You throw the dice. Okay. And you need to make 421. So 421. 421. For example, I have four. Yeah. I have two, but I don't have one. Damn it. You get three tries to get the 421 combination. And you play till you have 421. And the one who has 421 is winning. Okay. And the one who's losing needs to pay the rounds. Okay. And that's why they call it the sudden death. Okay. One. One. Yo. Two. Now I need to make the four. Come on, man. Come on, man. Four. 421. 421. Hey. You owe me a beer. I owe you a beer. Right? How about I buy you an apple? Apple beer. Yeah. We call it manzana. I will get you a manzana. You like apple beer? I love apple beer. I love a beer. Du manzana, s'il vous plaît. Du manzana, s'il vous plaît. So why all the fruity beers in Belgium? Basically, because beer is so prevalent here, they seek to make a beer that's palatable for everyone. So people who like fruity and refreshing, well, they make a beer that's fruity and refreshing. And the, it's, his, it's his round, right? Yeah, it's my round. Please, look at how excited he is that he got 421. Because you owe me a beer. I know. I'm excited because you owe me a beer, right? Here, it's my house. Here. Wow, that is apple beer, man. Yeah, no, no. I win. Bart is good for many, many, many um, rounds of play. Like that goes. And I gotta tell you, putting back all these beers with the barkeep makes me wonder. I say cheers. Cheers. How much does this guy usually drink when he's working? You you were telling me before that the customer likes to buy you a drink, beer. A beer. A beer. Yeah. Okay. But you were saying sometimes you could have twenty customers buy you a beer in one night. That's not uncommon. In one day. Yeah. It's nothing, yeah, 20 beers. 20 because beers? Because I start working, I start working at 10 in the morning, <laughs> and I finish at 2 in the night. I know. So That's I work for 15, 16 hours. You really tell me you can drink 20 beers in a day, and then afterwards you go out and have a beer to yeah, relax? Yeah, because when I finish my yeah. job, yeah. because we have a lot of stress. Well, so I, I don't know how stressed customers. out you can be by drinking no, no. all day. We have a lot of stress. <laughs> okay. And when I finish my job, okay. I like to breathe. <laughs> And I like to be relaxed. Okay. And then I go to a bar, which is still open in the okay. night. OK. And then I make five, six beers uh, <laughs> with my doggy. And uh, he doesn't drink. He might not drink, but he does hump people's legs. Now he's humping the, the sound guy's leg. Oh, hey, now. Hey, now. <laughs> so at Mort's a beat, Bart was friendly, and his dog maybe a little too friendly. But now it's off to the next place. And this is no ordinary bar. It's called the Delirium Cafe, and it's a beer drinker's paradise. Up next, flaming beers. Beers as strong as wine, $60 bottles of beer, the Delirium has it all. And this guy, a self-proclaimed beer hunter, tries to steal mine. Plus, after too much drink, I try to ease my hangover with some of the best chocolate on earth. That's really good. I know. <laughs> Hello, bonjour. Hey. <laughs> I was going to do it in French, but I, I just remembered at the end I don't speak French. Um, so we're, we're here at Delirium in Brussels, Belgium. The reason we're here is because this place holds a world record for the most beers at one bar. Today, there are over 2,600 beers to choose from. Needless to say, the menu is thick, and I have no idea where to begin. So Francois, the bartender, gives me a little Belgian beer 101, starting with a lesson on how to toast. Cheers. Cheers. Or a gesundheit. But he, he thinks it's funny. The yeah, guy at the last it place, is. It, it is funny. Is, it is funny. Uh, how, what, do you, what would you say? What would you say for cheers? For cheers, you say santé. 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 Cheers. Gesundheit. Wow. That's a hearty beer. Yeah, yeah. A beer with a kick. The beer I'm sampling is non-filtered, making it cloudy. 
and it's fermented three times rather than the single fermentation process that's typical in most U.S. beers. This triple fermentation process gives it a higher alcohol content. Though the flavor is mild, the taste of alcohol definitely comes through. Yeah, this one is 8.5. 8 8 so alcohol. if you drink something like 3 or 4, still okay. But after that, if you're not accustomed to it. Really? Yeah, it really. If, if I'm in here, or you're here, someone who drinks a decent amount, to have four of these would put you on your ass. Yeah? Good heavens. No problem. <laughs> wow. No, really. Yeah. It's really good, but good. really strong. It's re it is really good. But it's really strong. Yeah, it's you can well. taste the alcohol. Yep. You can order a weaker beer with an extra kick. Here, a shot of apple schnapps is used to give apple beer more flavor and potency. You might think it'd be harsh, but actually it's quite smooth. That's quite good. That is really good. Because normally we, we do it, especially with this one, because the fruity beers like strawberry and, and apple are only. Yeah. In alcohol, that's 2.5. Okay. It's really light. So you throw in the shot of the flaming. So it, it goes up maybe six, seven maximum. Oh, it's maximum. called Flamme de Beer. There are tons more beers to try. But first, I digress into the truly bizarre and oh so Brussels. So it's called uh, Genièvre, Juniper with uh, Belgian sprouts. Brussels sprout flavored booze. Ugh, only in Brussels. That's gross. <laughs> it made my nipples hard. It's okay. Oh my god. <laughs> so it tastes like licorice and gin and, for, for and Brussels sprouts. You see, he's, he's smiling because he's a fucking Brussels sprout. <laughs> These Brussels sprouts are really happy vegetables, apparently. Okay, back to the good stuff. A beer you can only buy in Belgium. You gotta go to the Abbey to fetch it. It's not possible to find it anywhere. So you have to go with your car and you only get one... Okay. One, one case. One case, yeah. Francois's bottle is just for show, because the monks make you promise not to sell it to anyone. In fact, we had to promise not to show the name of their beer on TV because if the word of this fantastic brew got out, beer lovers everywhere would be heading to the chapel. You gotta go to the Abbey to fetch it. There's another holy brew house in Belgium that's not so tight-lipped about their beer. It's the Orval Monastery. Uh, the explanation of the name, huh? Uh -huh. Golden Valley. Orval. Orval. Yeah. Golden Valley. Yeah. Father Dennis is a Trappist monk who served here for over 40 years. How old is that? are those ruins over there? Are they a thousand years old? Uh, the first monk came here in uh, the end of the 11th century. Trappist monks follow a tradition of making things, which in the case of the Orval Monastery includes Orval beer, which goes towards good causes. Most of the money from the Bravi is given up to to people uh, and uh, charities. So. They flavor their beer generously with giant tea bags full of hearty hops, giving it a very hoppy aroma. And the aroma is just one aspect of the product that's monitored by this lady. What is your, your title called? The beer engineer? Uh, beer engineer. Beer? Brew engineer. Brewing engineer. OK, OK. I try to see the color and uh, if the, the, the beer works. OK. She also monitors the beer's alcohol level, which is roughly 6.7%. Sorry. This monastery is one of only six Trappist breweries in the world. They produce roughly 14 million bottles a year, and if you search hard enough, you might find it in the States. Meanwhile, back at the Delirium, I'm gaining an appreciation for this very unique beer. Unlike most commercial American beers, Trappist ales are not pasteurized, which means the yeast stays active, allowing the beer to continue to ferment after bottling. Because of this, the art of pouring a beer is as important as drinking it. Especially with this 
to these beers. Yeah. Oh, is that's yeah, why the bottom. Why? You choose. Because that's the yeast. Oh. And, and so it, some it, people don't drink that? No, they can't. They just... Oh. No, because it's really, like, it, that beer is a living thing. Yeah. But sometimes, the like, especially in, the, in these kind of beers, I wouldn't. But for example, <laughs> if, you want, if you want to drink it properly, you should, for example... For Yowzer! <laughs> Good heavens! It's good. That is like um, beer syrup. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a strong beer. This is so strong. After drinking this, I'd say that American beer is like sex in a canoe. Fing close to water. <laughs> Most mass-produced American beers are more clear and mild than the Belgian craft beer is preferred around here, which is why beer connoisseurs from all over the world come here to experience beers that can only be found in Belgium. I've been a beer uh, hunter for 26 years. You're a beer hunter? You getting this? He's a beer, he's a beer hunter. I've been on the road since November 1st, hitting beer places across yep. the U.S. for four months. Now I'm in here and Europe yep. for four months, except for a little excursion to Thailand. Yeah. Don't yo. Well, they don't even know about that. Very soon, I realized Logan, the beer hunter, is happy to give me his opinion on my beers. Oh, now this, see, this is the new style. I don't, I don't know what it is. Is it one of them flurries or something? Yeah, that's apple. Apple yeah. with a... Uh, this is some new beers. They're really big in Belgium. It's not an authentic style. It's extremely sweet, cloyingly sweet. It sticks to your mouth. The more Logan lingers, the more he begins to drool over the beer that he does like. The uh, Chimay. This, by the way, ages really well. Some of us buy beers and age them. I have about 30 cases aging right now. And this, you age about five years, so it's perfect. This guy is getting a little too close to my beers. So you crazy. Coming up, can we get the so-called beer hunter to set his sights on someone else's beer? The guy behind me keeps drinking my beers. Then, after a night of many, many drinks, I try to take the edge off with some of the world's best chocolate. That's really good. I know. <laughs> By the way, we're in a Belgian pub, and we have Francois, and we got we got Logan, of course, hanging out. He's our uh, he's a beer hunter, which is very very intriguing. Yep, I got my 1994 GABF shirt. That's awesome! Whoa, great American beer. Hunter. That's awesome. When drinking in Belgium, you see flavored beers everywhere, like these, which get their taste from sugary extracts. Chocolate beer. English women really love it. As in, really England? love it. Like, it's a chocolate beer. Chocolate. I thought it'd be a little thicker. All right, now cactus beer. Your that favorite. tastes like uh, window cleaner. And that's strawberry. So right. Just a, just a sip. Let my stomach sort of like settle. It's really I mean, the same, really same color. This is beer with sugar in it. Lots, lots. Of it. There are flavored beers that are made with real fruit rather than sugar. Like this one. So what is this? Well, it's Crick. Cherry, cherry beer. All right. Skagbeek, so Kriken. You didn't, you didn't say that word. Skagbeek. You didn't even say Van Skagbeek. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it, Francois, because you keep messing it up. Van. Van Skagbeek. Scare. Skagbeek. Skagbeek. Kriken. Skagbeek. 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 Shorts. What happened? What happened? What, what is that? What is that? What did you just do? <laughs> it's a drinking thing. What did you just do? What is that? It's just uh, the kind of thing I used to do with, uh, you know, German people. Though Francois never tells me what this means, our crack research team found out that it's an unofficial German sign for good birth. This is so, a in the United States that please. sells for a lot of money. If you can, yeah. find, if you can find it. Yeah. You can't hear me. Authentic style. You can't hear me. Uh, He's just blabbing along style. like a stupid American. Blab, blab, blab. Blab, blab, blab. Blab, blab, blab. Blab, blab, Seriously, is he really still talking? Is he still talking? Is it? So, now, that's very interesting. Indeed. Unlike yeah. this, which is totally oh, hot. Apparently, very interesting yeah. means talk more. What is so this? Yeah, yeah, good. That's why. Don't worry. 
What is that? That's real fruits, not like all. Though the connoisseurs love it, I just can't do it. I think it tastes like beer and cherry cough syrup. Lovely beer, but it's an acquired taste. Yes. But if you are out on a date, this gentleman's an acquired taste. That's why he left. He's been traveling around hunting beer for the last four months. <laughs> the guy behind me keeps drinking my beers. He just keeps picking them up and drinking them like they're his beers. I didn't tell him he could drink my beers, but he's drinking my beers. He just picks them up and goes, oh, that's good. <laughs> That was very informative, enjoyable, and inebriating. I'm, dr I'm drunk. Thank you. Yeah, I did my job. Uh, you did your job very well. Very well. Okay, so after a night of cherry beer, chocolate beer, strong beer, and booze made from Brussels sprouts, needless to say, the next morning, I feel the need for something soothing and hopefully curative, like what could be arguably the best chocolate in the world. Meet Le Chocolatier Manon, owner and master chocolatier of Manon Chocolates in Belgium. <coughs> All right. He's the third generation Manon to run this place. And if there's anything that can make me forget about my Belgian beer headache, it's this guy's chocolates. But before I eat, he shows me his craft. Not gonna run off the side, right? No, no. You're no. good. You've been doing this. Before. I'm a pro. Okay. <laughs> He's cooling the chocolate until it reaches the right temperature and consistency, and that's not easy. <laughs> Why? With a hangover, I can't. What? You, what do you got? What you got? Yeah, yeah. Who's the chocolate man? Who's the chocolate man? I can't. Manon must work the chocolate until it's 32 degrees Celsius. So now I must take the temperature. OK, course. take the temperature again. No, 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 with the finger, because no. it's impossible to say this is exactly with the mouth. Yes. I'm going to tell you what it is. It's close. It's like 33. It's 35. It? Right again? Yeah, 35. All the temperature testing, everything is done by hand and to exacting specifications. No, 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 you're what? working like a fireman. OK, so I'm not a master chocolatier. You see now? Too much, too much, uh, too yes. much. I am, however, an excellent chocolate taster. <laughs> A lot of chocolate. You love chocolate? I love it, yeah, but it's a, it's a lot. You ever eat too much? No, I eat 250 grams per day. Well, I don't know if I could eat a half pound of chocolate right now, but a little is definitely treating me right. I don't have a hangover anymore. I feel a little mm. wee, <laughs> you know? <clears throat> Come to Brussels for a drinking excursion that involves more kinds of beer than any other place on Earth. Woo! And end it on a sugar high note. That's Belgium. From the monks who treat beer making with reverence, to the beer lovers who find Belgium to be their own form of heaven. From the bartenders who down 20 beers during a single day of work. It's nothing I try to beer. To the chocolate maker who eats half a pound of chocolate in one day. I'm a pro. Okay. <laughs> Belgium has shown me that maybe a little self indulgence isn't so bad after all. And that if you want to go three sheets, this is probably one of the best places on earth to do it. Cheers. Welcome to Brussels. Welcome to Brussels. Belgium. This ain't no Waffle House. <laughs> you, you gotta just... Hey, you got any Budweiser? Please. <laughs> Logan, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, Logan. Thanks, guys. Uh, a little bit of prunes. Uh, but there's smoke in here. One day, Belgium will be smoke-free. Oh, oh, oh. Okay.